The sun's been acting strange lately. Massive sunspots large enough to swallow Earth are building across its surface, each one capable of firing off a storm strong enough to disrupt satellites, power grids, even the internet itself. The last time a solar storm like this happened was in 1859, called the Carrington Event, which lit up the skies and shut down the world's first telegraph network. But this time, we are more connected than ever, and another storm like that could change everything. You see, the sun is approaching the peak of its 11-year cycle, a period called solar maximum. During this time, massive eruptions of energy blast billions of tons of charged particles into space. Most of them miss Earth entirely, but every so often, one lines up perfectly. When that happens, those particles slam into Earth's magnetic field at millions of kilometers per hour. They compress it and send electrical currents surging through the atmosphere. Usually, the effects are beautiful. Auroras lighting up the skies over regions that rarely see them. But when the storm is powerful enough, beauty turns dangerous. The most intense solar storms can disrupt satellites, damage power grids, and interfere with communication systems worldwide. And according to scientists, the sun has already started showing signs of unusually strong activity, meaning the next major solar storm isn't a matter of if, but when. Just this week, the European Space Agency and the Atmospheric Administration reported a major eruption on the sun, an X-class flare from sunspot region AR4274, which triggered a series of coronal mass ejections. The flare reached Earth's magnetosphere at high speed, more than 1,000 kilometers per second. Across the globe, auroras exploded into view. From the UK to Texas, even Australia and New Zealand's skies lit up with unusual southern lights. Most importantly, this isn't just a pretty light show. Authorities postponed the launch of the escapade mission because of the elevated space weather threat. What we're witnessing is a live event. And while today's storm didn't hit at full strength, it's a warning of what a stronger one could do. Even with all our technology, predicting a major solar storm is nothing like forecasting weather on Earth. We can't see a storm developing days in advance. At best, we get a warning only minutes or hours before it hits. To narrow down the timing, scientists watch the sun with a fleet of spacecraft, NASA tracks sunspot behavior, SOHO monitors solar eruptions, and the Discover satellite sits a million miles from Earth, measuring the solar wind as it approaches. When all three start showing rising magnetic tension in the same region, that's when space weather alerts begin to climb. But the real challenge is this. A sunspot can stay quiet for weeks and then release a massive flare in seconds with no clear warning. Other times, it looks dangerously unstable and does nothing at all. So, instead of predicting the exact moment, researchers track probabilities. They watch which active regions are turning toward Earth, how fast the magnetic fields inside them are shifting, and how much energy they're storing. When most people hear the term solar storm, they picture one single event. But the sun actually hits us in two very different ways. First are solar flares. These are sudden bursts of radiation, light speed blasts that reach Earth in just eight minutes. They don't knock out power grids directly, but they can jam radio signals, disrupt airline communications, and flood the upper atmosphere with charged particles. Then there are the CMEs, coronal mass ejections. These are the real monsters. A CME is a billion tons of magnetized plasma thrown into space like a slow moving tidal wave. If it's aimed at Earth, it can take anywhere from 15 hours to several days to arrive. And when it arrives, the big geomagnetic storms happen. But the danger depends on how it hits. If the cloud's magnetic field aligns opposite Earth's, the two fields can lock together, and suddenly, the energy that was harmless in space gets funneled straight into our atmosphere. This is when satellites malfunction and auroras explode across the entire sky. Some storms combine both, a flare first, then a CME behind it. Each type hits differently, spreads differently, and can cause completely different kinds of chaos. And right now, the sun is producing more of both. Now, the most important question is, when will this next extreme storm actually happen? We can only measure this by how powerful the sun's active regions are becoming. And right now, some of those sunspots are reaching magnetic levels we haven't seen in over two years decades. That's why researchers focus less on when the next storm will hit, and more on how much energy the sun is currently storing. 
When a sunspot grows rapidly and starts firing smaller flares in quick succession, that's a warning sign. It means the region is charging up, building toward a release that could dwarf the smaller eruptions we've seen this month. And during solar maximum, the ceiling for how strong a storm can get rises sharply. A typical CME might cause radio blackouts or stronger auroras, but an extreme rare event, the kind that only happens once every century or two, carries enough magnetic force to rewrite power grid behavior across entire continents. The truth is, Earth can't block a solar storm. We can only prepare for the impact. So instead of trying to stop the sun, we focus on protecting the systems that are most vulnerable. Power grid operators are already training for this. When a severe solar storm is incoming, they can temporarily reroute electricity, reduce load on transformers, or even shut down sections of the grid on purpose to prevent permanent damage. It sounds dramatic, but it's the same idea as bracing for a hurricane. The only limitation is time. Even with every spacecraft watching the sun, we might only get a few minutes of warning from a flare or a few hours from a CME. And that's why agencies around the world treat extreme solar storms the same way they treat major earthquakes. You can't stop the event, but you can build systems designed to survive it. Because when the next big storm does hit, the goal isn't to stop it, but to make sure the world keeps running when it does.